Most smart home automations seem to fit into at least one of four categories. There's convenience, such as letting you know that the dog wants to go outside. Let out. There's showing off, like disco mode LEDs. Security, such as an alarm system. And there are those which save you money. I've realised that the majority of my automations fall into that last category, so I thought I'd put together an ongoing series of videos specifically to talk about all of the different money-saving automations that I have in place. Hopefully, this will give you some inspiration for your own home automations. I'm going to kick off with this first video all about heating your home. Cue the cheesy introduction. For most people, heating their home is one of their biggest household expenses, and to some extent it's one that you can control just by using your heating less, but there will be an impact to your comfort levels if you just turn it off or down. There are ways to be smart about how you do that in order to achieve a balance between saving money and being comfortable. Firstly, a disclaimer. With most smart home solutions, you really aren't going to save any money overall if you just go out and buy a load of new gadgets for hundreds of pounds just to save a couple of quid a year. I would generally assume that you already have a smart home controller for other purposes and want to utilise that to its full potential. But a smart heating system really can save you money and really will break even on its purchase price over a few years if you stick with it. There are a number of different solutions out there, such as Hive, Taidu, and Honeywell Evo Home, which all include smart radiator valve controllers. This means you can control the heating temperature and schedule in each of your rooms individually. So no more overheating your bedrooms because the old thermostat in the hall hasn't got warm yet. Let's do some maths. Take a typical UK three bedroom house with a combi boiler. The average gas bill in the UK for this type of home is currently £1,970 per year. I priced up a Hive heating controller with eight radiator valves for £517 and a similar Taidu system for £508. Now, I couldn't find any recent data for how much Hive multi-room claims to save you per year on your bills, but Honeywell reckoned that their system could save you up to 40% and Taidu up to 30%. I think both of those are a bit too optimistic, but let's say that a 20% saving is far more realistic. 20% of an annual £1,970 bill is £394. So by that estimate, by the end of your second winter, your bill savings would have covered the cost of that system and saving you money overall from that point on. To me, this is a no-brainer. I personally chose the Honeywell Evo home system about five years ago because at the time there wasn't much choice for multi-room heating controllers and although I don't have any specific data to back this up because I just wasn't tracking it back then, I am very certain it has paid for itself and saved me money. Anyway, let's say that you've already made that decision and installed an off-the-shelf smart heating system and you've connected it to your smart home hub. In my case, that's Home Assistant. What can you do with it to help you save even more money? Here are just a couple of ideas. The first idea is really simple to implement. If, for some reason, one particular member of your household has a habit of leaving an external door open for hours on end, uh, then there's very little point in your boiler running just to have all of that heat suck straight out into your back garden. To minimise that, I created an automation that monitors the status of my doors. If they're left open for two minutes and the heating is on, it turns the heating off. Once the doors are closed, it'll turn back on. I went a little bit further with this automation though. Before turning the heating off, I also store the current heating mode and preset in a text helper. That could be auto, eco or a custom mode, which I use for when we have visitors. Then, when the doors close, I can simply restore those exact presets to what they were before. There comes a point in the springtime when you need to make a decision. Is it warm enough to turn the heating off yet? Well, 
I've delegated that decision to an automation. My Evo home heating system also has an eco mode, which drops the set points by two degrees. This is really useful for those in between days when you still might need a little bit of heating. First off, you need a weather forecast. I use the UK's Met Office API to pull in a forecast for my local area. What I'm after is the forecasted minimum and maximum temperatures for today. I then define some thresholds for what I consider to be acceptable external temperatures for when I think the heating needs to kick in. I store these values in a couple of number helpers. Personally, I find that 18 degrees as the upper threshold and 8 degrees as the lower threshold to be best for my needs. That means that if the highest forecast temperature is above 18 degrees and the lowest forecast temperature is above 8 degrees, then the heating is not needed. I then put together a script which takes this information and ultimately makes a decision as to which mode my heating system should be put in. At the top of the script, I have defined some dates. One of these dates signifies the start of spring and summer. The other date signifies the start of autumn and winter. You can tweak these as you see fit and their relevance will become clear in a second. There are also a select option helper to store the output decision and a text helper to store some logging information. The script starts by comparing the forecast temperatures to the thresholds you have defined. If the forecast is above those thresholds, then we move on to checking the date. If the date is during the summer months, we don't need heating, so we set the output helper to off. If we're in the winter months, we put the mode in eco. It's likely that this scenario happens around the start or end of the winter months. Then we hit the alternative condition that the forecast temperatures were below the thresholds. If today's date is during the summer months, it's a cold day, so let's set the mode to eco just in case. And finally, we have the ultimate default failsafe option, which infers that the weather is cold and we're in winter, so we turn the heating on. So how do you use this script then? Well, create yourself an automation that runs in the early hours of the morning. I suggest 3am because this avoids the potential lost hour during a change of daylight savings. The very first action of this automation is to call this script, which makes a decision on which heating mode you require. Then I added a couple of conditions. I don't want this automation to run if our heating system is set to away, or if I'm using a custom or visitor mode, because I've already set the mode I require manually. If I'm not using one of my manually set modes, then we carry on. The automation checks the helper value set by the script and sets the heating mode accordingly. Anyway, that's all for this video. And as always, I'll stick the full details up on my website and a link to that in the description. If you want to see more of these videos, then please like and subscribe. And if you have any interesting heating based automations, money saving automations or improvements to my automations, then please let me know in the comments. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.